What's going on, Kelsey, Emac, and Coach? So excited for week two of our ACC football road trip, and we're at NC State. That's right. We're with the Wolf Pack. Going to see a little practice. Going to talk a little ball, Coach. Come on. How about how are we getting to practice? That's where's our question. Where's our ride? That's a good question. Devin? Here to deliver a ride. Let's go, hey, baby. Let's come on. Go. Devin always delivers. Let's go. Hop on in. Hop on in. All set. Let's do, do it, it, baby. Do it. Let's go. The ACC football road trip is presented by Xfinity. And you might as well light it red because we are winning to be here at NC State as our ACC Network football road trip continues. Carter Finley Stadium, a place where last year the Wolfpack was undefeated. They've got a 10 game home win streak mm. going. And nice. we will see if they will continue that this year as we say hello from NC State, their outdoor practice fields for the first time alongside Eric McLean and Coach Mark Richt. I'm Kelsey Riggs. Great to be with you and great to be here with the Wolfpack, getting to see Devin Leary and company up close. He'll join us in a little while, as will Coach Doran in just a second. But first of all, Coach, how good is it to be here with the Wolfpack? We've got it's, high expectations. It's awesome. You know, I, you get a chance to see all the stadiums. Like I coached at Florida State for years, so I've been to all the stadiums, but you don't see the rest of the practice facilities. And you see these three practice fields out here. You see the weight room. You see the meeting rooms. You see all the things they have. It's just nice to see things up close uh, besides just the stadium. And then, as you mentioned, to see players yeah. up close. Uh, you know, as a coach, you'd like to look at those body types and say, <laughs> this guy's a baller, this guy's not. But uh, it's fun to meet those guys as people as well. And just an in-depth view of those facilities. I mean, I know Coach Thunder is loving <laughs> that new weight room. It looks absolutely beautiful. Right. And, and just to continue to build those relationships. I, we can't stress it enough to, to be here with the guys, with the staff, with these coaches. And, you know, number one, just show we love ball and we yeah. love you guys. So right. it's fun to be here. Cannot wait for this awesome practice behind us. Got to spend some time with Dave Doran yesterday. And as you saw, Devin Leary, because Devin does always <laughs> deliver. We'll get to talk with some of the guys on the other side of the ball as well some defensive guys we're talking brothers as well they've got four sets of Crazy. brothers here at NC State which is just absolutely insane a lot of people know the Thomas brothers we'll sit down with them in a little while and Emac is going to do some uh, drills with Grant Gibson somebody gets drilled in those no drills. reporters yeah. no hosts were hurt uh, we'll get in to that, that in a little while but right now let's take a look at some of the top storylines from NC State as we head into this year this season is all about Devin Lear you've already heard us talk about him a couple times it's going to be coming much more because he's the AC ACC preseason player of the year, the first and only quarterback in ACC history with 35 touchdowns and just five interceptions in a single season. On the defensive side of things, six players who made all ACC teams return from last season. So the conference's second best scoring defense should be reloaded once again, and they're healthy. Excited to talk about some of those linebackers throughout the show. Plus, you got to love the home atmosphere. Carter Finley Stadium, a place where the Wolfpack have won their last 10 here in Raleigh. It's the fourth longest active streak in FBS, and they've got seven more opportunities on the docket to do so in 2022. And speaking of that NC State schedule, kicking things off on the road for the first time since 2008 in Greenville, North Carolina, at East Carolina, before traveling home for three non-conference games against Charleston Southern, Texas Tech, and UConn, and then that will set the table for conference play and Dave Dorn's 10th season in the ACC, and they start that on the road at Clemson. And we are joined now by NC State head coach Dave Doran. Coach, great to have you with us. And listen, I, I got to start right here because we've only been sitting out here for a second and we're already sweating our tails off. You've been over there at practice and you look like you are just like having an, a, a nice day. How are, how are you surviving fall camp? Never let them see you sweat. Yeah. <laughs> no, we got a nice, you know, Raleigh day here. A little bit of heat, no clouds. Guys are they're handling it well. You look like you're handling it well, too. <laughs> hey, Coach, let's get to the nitty-gritty. How, how do you feel about that contract extension? I know oh, I yeah. know it's more than money, obviously. but Well, I feel blessed, first of all. You know, the opportunity to, to be at a school for 10 years, going into my 10th year, is it's hard to do. And 10 years ago, I walked into ACC Media Days, and, and I got to see Frank Beamer and Paul Johnson, you know, um, sitting there and, and several others that have been in this business a long time that uh, – treated me you know David Cutcliffe really put their arms around me Jim Grobe <laughs> wow. you know and now I walk in there and Dabo's the longest and then me you know it's crazy <laughs> and uh, so I feel blessed you know it, it's 
opportunity to be somewhere that we love and, and have that longevity helps you in recruiting. You know, I think it helps your staff retention to know that the head coach has that kind of contract as well. Coach, you talk about going into year 10, maybe one of the most different, unique situations you've had because of COVID, because of yeah. all the older guys and, and just the, the situation that you're presented with here. How has this camp been different with all this experience that you have back? You know, I think every year your team makeup is different. This year we're an older football team, like you said. And so we've got guys like 2,000 reps of gameplay, you know. <laughs> so those guys don't need every rep in practice. They need what they need. And, and I've told the position coaches that. It's their job to monitor the reps of their players and what do they need. Look at the scripts. This guy needs these plays or these defenses. And the ones they don't, get them out, you know. We're going to keep them conditioned when they're out. They don't just stand there and have a day off. Mm -hmm. You know, Coach Thunder will take them and we'll work them out or run them. So they're going to work, you know, but it's about getting them to game day with what do they need to be better than they were when camp started and be healthy at the end. Well, and Coach, you have so many guys that throughout your tenure have overcome so much adversity. Yeah. And I would imagine there's a lot of this, the guys on this roster that came back because others were coming back and they didn't get to play last year. What have you seen just as far as the chemistry and the camaraderie and, and kind of the makeup of this team after all of that? Yeah, I think we've learned, uh, coaches and players, you know, life's not fair. Uh, good things happen all the time, bad things happen all the time. It doesn't matter the type of person you are. God's going to put things in your path. He's going to challenge you. And our team's learned how to do that as one, you know, and, and going through all the things that everyone had to deal with you know, during the pandemic and the social things that happened in our country has made us a family, a tighter family. And uh, it's it's been unique. It's been an interesting time, you know, and I'm a big believer in that. You know, the obstacle that was in our path, you can look at it two ways. You know, for us, it's an opportunity. And this year's opportunity is just different than last year's opportunity because of the makeup of the roster. Coach, I know there's a lot of things we do as coaches to try to build team. You know, certain activities or certain yeah. moments or whatever. What are some of the favorite things you like to do to, to build team? Well, the other night we had an event called Victory Day where we bring in a bunch of uh, what we call special people in the community. And they're a part of our family that night, and we treat them like they're players on our team. They get to go through the building, put jerseys on, run out of the tunnel, <laughs> score a touchdown, learn how to tackle, throw, catch, and, and our players are the coaches, and they're players, you know. And that, to me, is one of the most special events that we do. Uh, we bring in a, a group called the program, a special ops group in the off season that teaches, you know, growing through adversity together and how to be a better teammate and how to be a better team leader. Those are two events, you know, that come to mind that really jump out. Coach, the, this linebacking core that you have is, yeah. is special. Yeah, and, and I know you're smiling. I'm smiling talking about them. Uh, they're a very unique group. All three are very different yeah. um, and had to step up at different times. Yeah. What do you want to see from them in this camp? Going kind of back to my question, they, they've all seen a lot of football. They all have different things they need to improve on. And, and you know, whether it's Drake, Peyton, or Isaiah you're talking about, you could ask them and they'll tell you specifically where they're feeling like they need to improve. It's my job to, to help them realize that opportunity and give them the situations and the conversations that allow them to get better, you know, and they are different, you know. Uh, Drake plays all three positions and can do it seamlessly, you know. Peyton's been out for a while, so it's getting his feet back out, uh, underneath them. And, you know, for Isaiah, it's just getting the rust off. He feels great, you know, so all three of these guys, it's so fun as a former linebacker yep. coach, you know, to come to practice and see those guys out there running around. I mean, everybody has a different way of defining it, but uh, if people talk about player leadership, player-led yeah. teams, but what does player leadership mean to you? How do you define it? You know, they can finish our sentences. You know, I think that's the biggest thing you want. As you know, we don't play the game with the, on game day. they got to be able to know what to do without us being out there with them. And leadership is doing it when no one's watching, too, you know, and I think those two things, we have a lot of that on our roster. And the fun part about this team right now is the offense and defense crosses over and leads each other. It's not one-sided. Wow. And they grab younger players and help them. You know, you'll see a pass rush where a D lineman will beat an O lineman or vice versa. And after the play, they'll be talking about what happened, you know, so they can get better. Coach Jordan, we really appreciate the time. Now you got to get back to practice. Yeah. Looking forward to seeing what you guys do this season again. It's awesome having you all here. Go Pack. Yes, sir. Thank you, Coach. We have enjoyed being here. We're just getting started here from uh, NC State as we have a pretty heavy guest list coming your way. Devin Leary, you saw him off the top of the show picking us up. Well, he's actually going to come take coach's seat in just a little while and join us here on set. Also, Emac 
He goes through some O-line drills with Brand Gibson. Don't want to miss that. Also, take a look at that, Coach. we got former quarterback Mike Glennon going to join us on, state and, on, on set in just a little while. Also, we love these mic'd up segments. Tanner Engel going to join us. And, of course, the Thomas brothers. Thayer and Drake going to go head-to-head -head in a little get-to-know-the-Thomas brothers as our ACC road trip from NC State continues. Road Trip is presented by Xfinity. Welcome back along to our ACC football road trip presented by Xfinity. And we are coming to you from the Wolfpack Outdoor Practice Facility. A warm day here in Raleigh, North Carolina, but a great day to be here talking about NC State football. And we are joined now by one of the guys that I think everybody is going to know very well, a guy who put up <laughs> incredible numbers last year. Guys, one of just eight FBS quarterbacks over the last 25 years to throw for 35 touchdowns and just five interceptions. And I like that part. <laughs> just so you know, three of the last four guys to do it, put up numbers like that. They, they were all drafted in the first round good. of the NFL draft. But we're not here to talk about the NFL. We're here to talk about NC State football. And Devin Leary, their quarterback, is with us now. Delivered yesterday on getting us um, where we needed to be and getting us over to the practice facility. Didn't tell us how hot it was going to be. Right. You know, you yeah. did deliver on the weather, too. But another fall camp for you. What's it like being back out here for this one? Yeah, it's been awesome. You know, being able to have a bunch of guys out here, you know, guys that weren't really able to compete last year due to injuries. Seeing those guys on the field has been awesome. And really just getting after it you know we're really competitive camp gets really intense but I mean every single day everyone brings their all and it's been awesome. Devin you're one of the best back shoulder passers I've seen in a long time and I've had some good ones in my day but tell us how, you know when do you decide to do it and, and how do you do how do you do it? Yes sir back shoulder is something that you know coach Beck is huge on uh, he always tells us to give our receivers a chance kind of just throwing the ball right at our receiver. We, you know, we like to say we don't like to throw long foul balls. You know, right. it looks pretty in the air, but if no one catches it, it doesn't matter. So right. as long as we can give our receivers a chance, that's what I try to pride myself on. Devin, there, there seems to be this unwavering confidence, this unwavering swagger just about you and, and the, the way you do interviews right now, the, the way you carry yourself out there. You're going into year three as a starter. What, what kind of, I guess, goals, expectations did you place on yourself for this camp? Yes, sir. I mean, for me, it was just to prepare as best as possible. You know, I think with confidence comes huge preparation. And, you know, for me going into this camp, you know, I need to take that next step in the offense of, you know, getting us to better plays to different looks. If we have, you know, certain pressures or protection calls, you know, I need to advance myself in this offense to get us to better plays, get us to better protections. And like I said, it all comes with preparation. So that's where it starts for me. And see, that's what I was interested in. So you, you're going into year three. Do you have the ability to, maybe not audible, but to adjust, to adjust a route or, hey, we need to run the ball right here. The box is empty. Let's go. Yes, what, what does that ability look like? Yes, sir. I think that's just, you know, experience within the offense. It's my third year in Coach Beck's offense, and, you know, he's kind of letting the leash off me a little bit. Um, so to say, you know, if we have a bad play or we have a bad look to a certain play, you know, it's on me to get us out of it. You know, I did a really good job this offseason of studying and making sure, you know, I get us to those right calls, and that's what we're out here practicing for. Dangerous. Your, in, your Dangerous. interception ratio is the best in school history, and I like that as a coach. <laughs> guy that'll protect the yeah. ball. But, but why do you think that is? What, what are some of the habits you have they keep you from throwing it to the other team. Yes, sir. I think, you know, just keeping in the back of my head a couple of that was uh, sayings that we say in the quarterback room, you know, needy, not greedy, and, you know, always can't go broke <laughs> taking a profit. So whatever the defense gives us, just, you know, not getting, you know, too greedy, right. just always being able to check that, take that check down if we need to, right. and, you know, always just living for another play. I yes, love sir. both of those. Devin, we got to see the special connection that you had with Emeka last year. We've talked a little bit about losing him and losing Icky and some of the other guys. So I want you to brag on some of the guys that you do have. Who's really been standing out to you and who are you really excited about that you guys have coming back? Yeah, I mean, when you have, you know, veteran guys like Devin Carter and Thayer Thomas coming back, that's always a plus. And, you know, fulfilling that new role of who's going to be that new Emeka Mezzi too. Um, you know, we already know what Devin and Thayer could do on the field. And, you know, we have some different guys stepping in. You know, we have Anthony Smith, Daryl Jones, even some young guys. You know, Porter Rooks played a significant amount for us last year, Julian Gray. And, you know, those dudes are competing. Those dudes want to earn a spot on the field. But it's awesome to have, you know, all those guys really eager to earn that spot. So there are going to be a lot of new guys out there, Devin. You know, obviously you're losing uh, Big Icky, a guy who has been your your guy for, yep. for so many years now. You're losing a couple of really good running backs. We just mentioned Ameka Mezzi. 
you, you are one of the leaders, probably the leader of this team right now. What do you want to see from those new faces on this offense throughout this entire camp? Yes, sir, I just want to see them learn. I mean, everyone's going to make mistakes. That's what practice is for. But I mean, I want to see them, you know, come up to me or come up to a coach and learn from their mistakes. You know, ask, how can I get better? Or why did I do this wrong? And, you know, for me as a leader and a quarterback of this team, that goes to show how much they care. And, you know, those guys are doing that. They are asking me, hey, can we go over certain concepts? Hey, can we watch film on the side of without the coaches? And, you know, that just shows me how much they care. And, you know, that's everything that you could ask for as a veteran player. So, Devin, you're from New Jersey, right? Yes, sir. How in the world do you end up in Raleigh, North Carolina? <laughs> I don't know. I just found my home spot, honestly. Uh, I took a visit down here. Coach Doran offered me a scholarship. Came down here with my parents, and they said it, it was like a gold mine down here. They'd never even heard of it. Uh, awesome. And when we got down here, you know, we saw all the facilities, met all the coaches, and it was a no-brainer. Well, Devin, I know that they're excited to have you here. And before we let you go, the other thing I wanted to ask you about is, is the recognition. You were talking about the confidence, the swag you have, and the numbers that you put up. But ACC preseason player of the year, quite an honor. What does that mean to you? Yeah, I think it is a huge honor. I mean, a little bit of my hard work and my film from last year is paying off. But at the same time, I know that puts a bigger target on my back each and every week. So I just got to prepare 10 times as hard as I did last year. And, you know, each and every week, I'm going to lay it all on the line every Saturday. Needy, not greedy, he yeah. said. I'm I taking like that. that one with me. Devin, we appreciate the <laughs> time. You. Look forward to seeing what you do this season. I appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you. Man. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Thank you. We mentioned some of those guys that are coming back around him. Take a look at this because, man, he's got some uh, really great wide receivers coming back. Also, Jordan Houston at the running back spot, some tight ends as well that should be able to come in and make a pretty immediate impact on this offense. And yeah, Emac, they'll look different without Emeka. They'll yeah. look different without Icky. Um, you don't replace a guy like Icky, right. right? You just find a, a group of players that can kind of do what he <laughs> did, right. I think, in a way. Um, who on that list are you really looking forward to stepping up this year? Yeah, obviously the, the wide receiver position. You know, I think Devin Carter and Thayer Thomas are, are going to be two guys that their production has to drastically improve. And and really, you know, I think a guy like Thayer is, is going to be that Emeka Mezzi. Now, right. body type, significantly different, right? Very different. But the way that he's going to be able to do things, I mean, Thayer should be touching the football 70-plus times this season and, and be really that go-to guy. But, Coach, we were talking about this yesterday. I, I'm excited to see the guys that weren't on that list. Mm -hmm. I'm, right. I'm excited to see how Devin, who is, is the best quarterback in the conference, how does he elevate – everybody else kind of that tom brady type deal where you right. might not have stars everywhere but man you can lift those guys up to where they are well one thing that's going to help him and he mentioned coach beck the offensive coordinator right. being in the third year in the same system is you can't even measure how valuable that is for the quarterback but also for the young guys they've not heard one or two or three different ways of doing things so even though the guys may not have had a lot of game reps they've had a lot of practice reps They've had a lot of meeting reps right. where they're learning the system and really understanding what they're going to do. And now they can let their talent flow, and it's going to be fun to see who's going to do it. Sorry, but also how, benefit, how beneficial coach for the coaches that he has. You know, not yeah. just the young guys, but, oh. but what they're able to do with him now this third year as a starter. There's no doubt. I mean, the rapport between a quarterback's coach and the quarterback, you just can't measure it because right. if, a coach, if a quarterback's got a new coach every year, he's going to hear, you might hear the same play but a different, just a slightly different way of doing it, or a little, a little different saying, right. so to speak. And it just it, it messes with your mind. So to have that consistency is huge. And we're going to see that on the field. I loved that he brought that up. I was going to ask him if he didn't say it, and, and he did there about how he has the ability to get them in the right situation. That doesn't mean he can sit there and call any play he wants, right. but if he sees there's a read or if he sees, okay, we're running right, it's overloaded right, guess what? We're either going to go left or we're well, going to pass it. Back in the beginning, it's important. When, you, when you're doing that with the quarterbacks, usually you teach them get out of a bad play, get yes. out of a bad play. Yes. But when you get a veteran, you go from a good play to a great play. Exactly. You might see something that gives you a shot at a home run, right? and the coach gives you the green light. If you see this look, <laughs> I trust you to get, get us into it. So. First, you're trying to get out of a bad play. Later on, you're trying to get in the best play. And it will be great to see just how much does he use that? How much does he have that ability? It'll be very evident early and often. Devin Leary back for a fifth year, third year as a starter. He is the ACC preseason player of the year. And I know he's excited about the guys he does have coming back in front of him. Another guy who came back for another year, their center, Grant Gibson, who EMAC got to go uh, through a little O-line drills. Take a look. I can't wait. 
Let's get right into it, man, because people don't know the in-depth nature uh-huh. that goes into offensive yes, line play, right? Yeah. The O-line, listen, it's a lot of things that you have to think of when you first step up to the ball, right? The film that we go through each week is key. Um, we have to know the guy that we're going up against. Is he power guy or right. speed guy? These are the things that we have to think about when we first step up to the line, right? Because yeah. you can't set the same way on speed versus power. So that, that's, that's right. Okay, so so listen, you're going against, I'm looking at the schedule, and I just did my top five D tackles, uh-huh. right? You might see all five of them. You play three of them. Yes, sir. You go against one in Corey Durden every yes. single day, yes. and then if you make it to the chip, maybe you see Pitt, who knows yes, what Kalaja Kansi yeah. and those guys are going to do. So I just want to kind of break down a little bit. So let's say you, you've got a guy kind of like me, a good looking big yeah. guy. What, what does that set look like? Because you know there's a lot of power, uh-huh. you know there's not much speed, much yeah. twitch. So just walk me through, you're the center, Let's yeah. see what the steps look like. What does the set look like? So me being me, right, but the guy that's bigger, right, you don't want to lose any ground, right? Because if you because if you if a guy that's got mass, like time and space, they're going to gain speed, right? And then that's hard to stop. So my set versus a large nose is I'll snap the ball. Yep. Do we need a quarterback? Him. We might need uh, Kelsey Reyes. Oh, yeah. Can you oh play yes, yes, absolutely. All right, so we got a quarterback. All right, let's all right, walk through it. Let's so, walk through so it. So listen, right? All right, I'm going to just snap the ball too, all right? So you got a big okay. piece and nose guard. Yeah, listen. So first things first, right? You're gonna step forward and take him out. Right. I'm sorry about that, She's right? Good. She's good. But you don't want to lose any ground. Like you want to take the space away instantly. Because he's big. Because you don't he's want big. You don't options. want him to get started going with the power and things okay. like that, right? Okay. So a twitchy guy now. Quick okay. Twitch, so like me, right? Smaller guy. Let's see. He's off you a little uh-huh. bit. What? What's the steps? What so are you so if it's third and long, right, and they know it's a pass. I'm going to get speed, all right? You don't want to jump him, right? Because with the guy that's speedy, right, he's trying to get off the ball quick. So you want to get some depth to make sure that you still have time and space, right? It's it's those things that you have to know when you step up to the ball, like, all right, uh, what's the yardage, things like that, right? That some people don't know that we have to think about each time that we step up to the plate. Um, yeah, but speed, though, like I mean, it's like me, like, I like to deal with bigger guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm strong as well. It's easy. You know what I'm saying? I'm strong as well, right? But when I get a defensive end inside that's quick, I'm like, all right, Grant, like, come on, let's lock in. Time to lock in. Yes. Time to lock in. Okay, so give give me your perfect situation. It's third and eight. We got to have it. We got to have it to win the game. What's your, what's your go? Are you snapping and punching? Are you getting up quick? All right, so snap and punch is my go-to move um, just because. So here's how this works, right? right. Don't okay, comment. I make sure to just right, snap. Don't break my chest. Listen, I got you, right? So you but here's got what you want to do, ready. right? So I snap it, right? And then, poof, right at him. Step to him. And here's why, because you don't want them to get going, right? Like, my goal is to attack. Like, I don't want them to come and attack me. Like, like I want to be the one that sets the tone first. So that's, that's right. what I do. How about this team, man, in general? I feel like you're an old team. Yeah. You've got experience. And mm-hmm. there's there's high expectations. Yes, what has this summer and the beginning of fall camp been like? Because this is kind of mm-hmm. unprecedented territory. You're almost the hunted right now. Mm-hmm. So for me, uh, this is my sixth year. So I've seen the highs and lows of NC State. But this might be the best team that I've been on at, at State. How about Devin Leary? He's the real deal? Oh, that's the man. Uh, listen, like I don't think that words can explain how poised he is. He's just calm and he can go out there and he plays well. So that's why, as an offensive line, like we try to give him time because we know that if we do, then he'll make those hard throws. Makes it easy for us. Yes, that's sir. That's on absolutely. the line, baby. Appreciate, Appreciate you. you. Yes, sir. Absolutely. This is a team that won nine games last year and could have won 10. We won't get into all of that. Um, <laughs> but he just said it might be the best team that he's ever been on at NC State. Um, Anything else that you guys really took away from that piece that we just saw? Really the, the maturity, the, the leadership standpoint, but uh, right. also our quarterback's hand placement coach, Yes, it wasn't great. I, I don't know if we can pull that back up, but if, if you guys didn't you see guys. this. Uh, you Kelsey guys. Kelsey here, hands wide open, <laughs> yeah. and just bow out. Headshot, look out. Can I say this, though? Oh. Please say it. I don't what know was, what, what was your sport? <laughs> Soccer. So, Soccer. So you're, never, you're, you're taught. She was never, good with these. Never. Don't ever, ever use your never, hands. Never use your hands. Your whole life, you never used your That's hands. That's exactly right. And it showed. It, it did coach, show. I, coach, I do want to say this. Did you see how it was ingrained in me to just move the drill and keep <laughs> That's it right. on? We don't. What, what? What did Coach say? Stack the dead and keep the wounded marching. <laughs> and our guy Grant was like, "Sorry about that." He's and afterwards and we, we watched go. it. He had no. They had no idea. <laughs> I had taken it straight to the face. <laughs> um, I will say I learned from the mistakes. The next time I spiked it down, I was not gonna get hit in the lip again. Right. Um, <laughs> I did tell him before. I said, "Snap it to me like I'm Kelsey, not like I'm Devin Leary." Yeah. That competitive edge never goes away. No, he was gonna give me that. <laughs> that thing was half speed. Hundred miles a minute. Yeah. And how about Emac calling the audible and just calling me in? No heads up. 
up, you know, uh, never will I ever take a snap from Grant Gibson <laughs> again. Um, I think I learned my lesson when we come back. We got a lot more here and not just with us though. This is actually really cool. The crews are out here right now. The all access. It's a three part series with NC State. It starts Sunday at 8 p.m. It's a rare behind the scenes look at NC State football leading into this 2022 season. First episode premiering exclusively on ACC Network Sunday after the break. We'll show you a trailer, though, for all access with NC State football. And on the other side of this break, we've got another quarterback joining the show. The one, the only former NC State standout, Mike Glennon, with us after this. No matter where you look on campus at NC State, you'll see red bricks, the literal building blocks, stepping stones, and heart of the university. They form the historic buildings and pathways that crisscross campus. And over half a million alone lay right here at the Brickyard. They're even under the paint and art of the Free Expression Tunnel. And at Carter Finley Stadium, the red bricks welcome you as you enter. A constant reminder of the strength and connection that is the foundation of the NC State Wolfpack. to NC State as our ACC Network football road trip presented by Xfinity rolls on from the Wolfpack outdoor practice facility and take a look at those crews in there. It's not just the players. It's our all access team getting you the in-depth look on what's going on here at NC State and you're going to get a preview right now of that all access piece that is slated to air on Sunday. Here's a little sneak preview. I got high expectations for this football team, as our fans do, um, as our community does. I think they're primed to be ACC champions this year. That's the expectation. I'm Dave Dorn, the head football coach here at North Carolina State. I just want to welcome everybody to our pro day. Is your QB going to be a senior? He's a redshirt junior. Is he going to throw today? He is. Oh, that's awesome. He's about to look good out here. <laughs> Good memory making, man. I think some of my favorite childhood memories are just fishing with my grandpa on a dock. That's fish. Good bass right here, boys. Bad day fishing beats a good day at work. They say we can tell your ACL it never hurts. I couldn't control what happened to me against Miami, but I can control my reaction going forward. As a family, we come down here every year during the 4th of July. Once the season starts, there's no time for stuff like this. So just having this downtime just right before camp starts, it means a lot. Good stuff. Rare behind the scenes look at NC State football program. The three part series will air the first one on Sunday. And look who we are joined by now. Former NC State quarterback Mike Glennon here with us and so excited to have you with us. Um, Mike, you spend a lot of time out here when you can. Now you're here um, in the Raleigh area. What's it like being back at practice and being around the guys? It's great. Uh, it's my first training camp I haven't played in in a long time. So to <laughs> that be feels back good, out here, right? You know, I don't completely miss it but you get the inch a little bit out here it just smells like training game you know the grass the mowed grass <laughs> yeah. around the guys but it's always great to be back uh but you said i live in raleigh and around the program a lot and i'm lucky that coach doran gives me the access that he does emac sees some of these drills and he's like nope those aren't for me I'm anymore good. right I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> because of that access you know a little bit about Devin larry uh -huh. and uh, i'd like to hear from your point of view what what makes him so good it's his arm talent. This guy spins it as well as anyone. All the quarterbacks that come through NC State, Philip Rivers, Russell, myself, Jacoby Brissett, Ryan Finley, I like to, you know, QBU, right? That's right. <laughs> this guy, the ball jumps off his hand as well as anyone. Uh, and he's grown into more than just a thrower. He's a passer. He kind of came in, he always had that arm, but now he sees the field really well. He does a great job using his eyes, going through his progressions, and I, deservingly so, you know, the 2022 ACC preseason player of the year. Five picks in the whole season. That's pretty it's incredible. Good incredible. <laughs> it's pretty good. Mike, I want to dive in a little bit more about Devin just because his confidence seems like it's at an all time high. And, and, you know, deservedly so. He's going into year three as a starter. What is that mindset? For, if, if it was you going in year three, you're the man, this is your team. 
What does that look like? What should we expect going into this season? Well, he's been in this offense for a while, so he's kind of seen it all. He's run these plays so many times against all the different coverages. You think back to Tom Brady and all those years he's in New England. The more reps you get in an offense, right. the better you're going to be. And I think Devin's at that point. I sat in a meeting this morning. He's got command of the offense. He asks good questions. He's going over with Coach Tim Beck. Oh, what do you want to do in this particular look? And he's at that stage of his career where he's now completely running and mastering this offense. How about those wide receivers? Because I know there's a couple guys out there that last year did some spectacular things. Of course, Noah Mecca Mezzi this year, who is such a great talent and such a great target for Devin last year. What have you seen from Thayer and other Devin Carter and some of those guys? Yeah, I think they're definitely going to miss Emeka Mezzi because that looks like that was kind of Devin's go-to yeah. guy last year. He loved going to him. But they do have Devin Carter on the outside, another big guy. And, and Thayer Thomas has been around for a long time. Uh, and I think that's kind of Devin's security blanket. When, when it's third and short and he needs a first down, he's going to find him. And uh, there's receivers, you know, they got to replace, find a replacement for Emeka and Mezzi. But they got two guys that are, are ready to step up and do that. So replacing Emeka, replacing a couple of really good running backs, replacing a, a, the first offensive player taken in last year's draft in Big Icky. I mean, there are some gaps. There's a lot back. What do you expect this offense to look like from, from a 10,000 foot view going into this year? I think that, you know, there's a lot of preseason hype around NC State. And I like to say pressure's privilege. They've earned the right to be in this stage. And Devin has come in, kind of taking this team over. And I think they'll pick up where they left off last year. Yes, they have to replace, the, you know, their first round left tackle. They got to replace the running backs. But when you have a guy coming back for his fifth year at quarterback, mm -hmm. I think he'll take care of it all. So, so I mean, would you think more pass just because he's that good, right? He, he's that good of a guy. You lose two running backs. I mean, would you not be surprised if it's 60-40, 70-30 pass? I mean, I know you want to be balanced, but just, I mean, what you've seen, what you experienced, what would you think? Yeah, I would imagine they're going to put a little more on his plate and throw the ball a little bit more. But they have a good system here where they are kind of balanced. They're not just an air raid system. But yeah, I think we can expect to see that number probably go up a little bit this year. And, you know, 35 touchdowns last year, we might see 40. That's not bad. Well, let's go down memory lane just for a second. <laughs> In your playing day, what was the most exciting victory you had as a – Well, I noticed here? EJ Manuel's not here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is there, you know, some PTSD or, or what he's got going on? But, uh, you know, we, we played EJ my senior year. They're number three in the country. We had no business being on the same field as them. Their whole team goes on to get drafted to the NFL. And miraculously, we knocked them off over there, Carter Finley. Sun, uh, Saturday night under the lights, it was the uh, most memorable night of my college career. That, that is a house of horrors for <laughs> FSU. I, anytime you turn on ACC Network, oh, here's another upstate I, of I was uh, there NC State. as the coach at Florida State. Torrey he knows Holt, it. Torrey Holt had five touchdown catches. Winky threw five picks. Mm. It was a, it was a rough mean, day at the office. Eric's exactly right. My, and all my years here, Christian Ponder came here on a Thursday night. We knocked him off. EJ comes here. We knock him off. It's... <laughs> For whatever reason, yes. Carter Finley turns up when uh, when the Seminoles come down. Mike was sitting here waiting just before <laughs> you guys I asked me that question. I got, I got a good answer. EJ, he, he still remembers. I'm sure EJ still remembers <laughs> Sorry as well. Sorry about that, EJ. But, yeah, Mike, we really appreciate the time. Third all-time in NC State program history with 63 passing touchdowns. QBU here at NC State. Thanks That's right, so much. Man. Thanks for having me, guys. On the other side of this, we go to the other side of the ball and we go back out to the practice field. Tanner Engel, one of their star safeties. Oh, look at him. He's ready. He's Lewis. He's feeling it. He's going to be mic'd up after this. Welcome back out to Raleigh, North Carolina. You're looking at Carter Finley Stadium, a place where the Wolfpack were undefeated last year, thanks in part to that spectacular defense that they had. A lot of those returners back this year. And we are joined now by Tanner Engel in the middle of practice. Tanner, thanks for taking the time. First of all, tell us uh, what, what we got going on here. Oh, we got a little hands going. Just working on that. <laughs> Tanner, we're going to find out how good of a DB you are right here, man, because you guys, when I was playing, talked the most trash. So we got to see it live and in person. While you're being coached, while you're doing a drill, how are you handling that? <laughs> I think you lost one of the AirPods. Can you hear us on the other one still, Tanner? Yeah, I can hear you on the other one. 
Okay, he's got us on the other one, Coach. All right, hey, Tanner, you led the team in tackles, but you also led the team in number of plays, 776 plays. How in the world did you get to be so durable? What's the, what's the key to your durability? I couldn't do a good job on emphasis and just taking care of yourself. So throughout the season, you got to make sure you take care of your body off right. so you're able to last long. Tanner, Emac was talking about talking trash. I want to know what it's like to go up against Devin and these these wide receivers at practice. Who's talking the most and trying to trying to have a little fun with you, getting your head? Devin Carter the most. Devin Carter the best. <laughs> what's, he, what's he like? Talk, get, yeah, give us a little rundown of how it goes when you guys are lined up against each other. <laughs> a lot of that I can't say on air. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But, you know, just, it's just a friendly competition. Every day, especially between him and T-Bag, it's fun watching them go against each other. I love that, man. Hey, listen, you're you're a leader of this great defense. You guys have so many talented guys back. What should the expectation be of this defense each and every Saturday? Uh, we, we should expect to go out there and give up no points. That's the goal, you know. If points go out us, they can't win the game, so. That's, that's the plan when we go out there every Saturday. Hey, Tanner, back in the day, you could you could just run through a defenseless player. You could just light that guy up. Nowadays, we've got these targeting fouls. So help me out with some coaching points on how you hit a defenseless player. Uh, you got to make sure you keep your head out the, head out the strike zone, lead with your shoulder. <laughs> Stay low, away from the head. I learned my lesson about that. Long ago. Tanner Emac asked you about the expectations for this defense, and, and I know you got a, a lot of guys that are coming back that have overcome so much adversity. What's it like to have those guys back? And I know they're really big leaders at standing beside you and around you. It's just extremely exciting. Those guys, guys, guys like, guys like, oh, okay. Guys like Fagan, guys like Isaiah Moore, leaders of our defense, you know, they go out there and go to that extra spot, spark out there on the field. It's just, it's a very encouraging thing to see, you know, guys that miss playing, the, guys miss playing football, being able to come out here and have fun again. So, you know, we're just excited to see what them guys do this year. Tanner, we're excited to see what you do as well. You're the best. Loses an AirPod, keeps it on going like you didn't miss a step, just like you look out there on the on the field every Saturday. Tanner, we appreciate the time. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thank you, guys. Good stuff there with Tanner Engel. We're expecting good stuff on the field as well. Not just from him, but some of the guys that are returning around him as well. They had seven All-ACC selections last year. Six of those players running it back in 2022, including three players named to the first team and a couple of defensive linemen coming back that had injuries last year. And oh yeah, a couple of linebackers coming back that were injured last year as well. Probably Emac, I would say, and I'm sure that you think one of, if not the best linebacking core in the country that they're going to have here at NC State with all these returners? Yes, I think it's Alabama, NC State battling out for who, who's going to be the best. And ultimately, it's going to come down to health, you know, for these guys. Can right. they all be on the field at the same time? But when you look at them individually, I mean, my goodness, fierce competitors, three alpha dogs uh, that really can just do different things for your defense. When I look at Isaiah Moore, a guy who is the true alpha, he's right. calling the defense, he's setting everything up. He will knock you silly. I look at uh, big Isaiah, or Peyton, excuse me, and, and the, the length that he has, the range right. that he has, uh, and then Drake Thomas, the firecracker, right. the shorter of the three, but he brings the biggest punch, Coach. I would love to be in their linebacker meetings <laughs> oh, yeah. and watch them watch themselves critique themselves, but cr critique their teammates yeah. and bust their chops and have a good time <laughs> about it. But just think about it. When you have other great linebackers next year, it holds you accountable to every moment of the day, right. be on your best and uh, they're doing a great job. And coach, we, we talk about it with offense all the time, right? We're offensive people, we like the offense, but when you look at this defense and you look at those three guys specifically, they move like a glove. I mean, it's right. the same steps. We were watching a drill earlier in one, two, three, it's in unit, it's the most beautiful thing right. that you've ever seen. So that's why stay healthy, be on the field at the same time. This could be one of the best defenses but in the country. When you're on offense, 
You love the defense game day. <laughs> That's right. Not, not right now. They're in practice, you hate them. Because why? They know your Listen, chicks. They cheat. They, they <laughs> get the script. They know the whole deal. Come on. They come on. We're not lying. lying. I promise. But in, in the games, if, if they're stoning people, getting three and outs, That's right. getting a good field position, <laughs> makes the offense very happy. So Defense wins championships. No, I don't know what no, you're talking about. It sure helps. That's for sure. Not <laughs> it sure, it sure it does. did last um, year, actually. Speaking of some of those defensive stars, um, they, you know, you see them on this list that name we were just talking about, Drake Thomas. But guess what? You also see a couple of other names on the list that share the last name. Not one, not two, not three, but four <laughs> sets of brothers on this NC State football team. Twins as well. So Fred that's cool to see Fred and, and Sed walking around the, the facilities yesterday. I actually got to sit down with two of the brothers, Drake and Thayer Thomas, and talk a little ball and a little bit of life with those guys too. All right, I'm here with one of those sets of brothers now. We're gonna call this like NC State and the family or Wolfpack family. Are we a Wolfpack of three right now or? <laughs> yes, okay. Guys, I'm gonna ask you all a couple questions and you're gonna, if you think it's you, you point to yourself. If you think it's your brother, you point to your brother Thayer and Drake with me now. So um, let's start off really easy. Who is mom's favorite? Yeah, I had a oh, feeling me. that we would disagree. Me. I think when we were younger, it was him. You know, he was like the uh, the big time like rule follower. I, that's uh, where I was the golden child. He did. Yeah, say when that. growing up, that's what my little brother even calls him now. But I think as we've gotten older, I think I'm starting to win my mom over more. I mean, I could see that. Um, definitely, when I was younger, um, I tended to tell on Drake a lot and mm -hmm. just tattle and snitch on him. But now, I mean, I think she still likes me. But I could see she, his relationship with my mother has gotten better. So what did you do when he was always telling on you? Uh, I mean, I would just be mad, obviously. I would yeah. try and fight him or whatever it was. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it just he was always telling on me, no matter what it was. So he, who's dad's favorite? Uh, uh, I want to say me. I would say even split. I think, but me and my dad, I would say, uh, kind of went back and forth a little bit more, just because I think we're more similar. Yeah. Uh, I, I would say like more like alphas a little bit, um, but one thing grew up coaching him. Yeah. He he always kind of shied away from coaching me because I would always kind of give him a little bit back. Uh huh. He always coached. He was all, that middle child syndrome. Yeah, I know all about yeah. that. Yeah. He was always my head coach, and then he would always uh, travel with me if I like to uh, travel, um, like baseball tournament or basketball tournament. I always seemed to be with my dad. Um, I don't know if it was just being the oldest child, the oldest yeah. son, um, but it sort of seemed like that. But. I, know, I know your little brother, if he was here, would have something to say about who you guys think are both of these favorites. Um, one. He's my, my dad's favorite. My little brother, my <laughs> it always goes that way with the baby. They think mm -hmm. they're the favorite anyways. Um, one more favorite question. Who's Coach's favorite? Coach Doran? Mm-hmm. Me. I'd say me. I'd say maybe Drake because he plays defense. Yeah, he <laughs> yeah. defense. He coached, uh, Coach D coached uh, linebackers at Wisconsin, was defensive coordinator, so I'd say me. Who would win one on one? And what, what kind of one on one? Uh, let's go basketball first, actually. I mean, he played in high school, but as we've got. What, I think I, oh. what happened to Myrtle Beach when you were trying to guard me about a month ago? I mean, he gets hot here and there, but he, he's not as good as he. <laughs> He thinks he's still as good as he was in high school, but he's not as good anymore. How about one-on-one, -on -one, you guys are in a drill on the field, who's gonna win? Well, if it's, it's a, a physical drill, he's yeah. not blocking me. I blocked uh, you yesterday, but it, you didn't make the play, so I, was I don't know. I to take you after you cracked back on me. But he, if it's a one-on-one -on -one coverage, 100%. I've won some matchups. 10 out of 10, I'm winning. Um, I've won those matchups, too. So that brings me to my next question, which is who is most likely to pick a fight? Because it sounds like we almost got that at practice. We had a, we got a little. Pick a fight with each other? Yeah, yeah, who's I'd gonna. Yeah. He won't, he would never fight me. Oh, he wouldn't. No. See, he's picking one right now, the instigator. And he would, he won't. I'm, I tried, like, even in high school, we used to butt heads, and I'd try to, like, you know, if it gets to the point where I have to fight, I'm definitely going to fight, but <laughs> I'm not the one that's going to like A lover a and a fighter, it's okay. Um, who's the better driver? Me. I can't ride with him. He makes me mad. I drive the speed limit and I... I don't drive fast So it's either, not that your car is sick or anything, he just, he drives too nicely for you. Yeah, uh, not even that. You got one the speed, it's go. like that he does when he's driving <laughs> that, I just, I just can't do it. Like he, he's, I can't ride with him. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't really, I always get forced to drive though, because he doesn't want to, you know, if, if we're going home, he's like, you driving? And I'm like, yeah. Well, so he rides with me. I have a big Tahoe. So he doesn't want to I had a big Tahoe, so I'm gas right now, so. So he's always it's trying not. to bum a ride. Like, if we're going out of town, you going this, like, he's always he's driving, I'm going, yeah. 
I got one last question for you guys, um, and this is courtesy of someone that told us that we needed to ask this. Who's the better um, Instagram model? <laughs> Instagram model? I don't really see myself as a model. I don't know. <laughs> he, that's, that's him. He, that's all him. I mean, he's got some little, little vibe. I hear one of us is more of a on. troll on Instagram than the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I give, yeah. leave him some good comments sometimes. And the thing is, he thinks it's funny. It's hilarious. I it's mean, I have not. like, I have like, you know, I, everybody likes my comment whenever I post it on his uh, post because I leave good comments. Like when we were in high he school, he doesn't think it's funny. But when we were in high school, he used to, like he used to get in my head. I'm not gonna lie, like he would say things in I my head. But like say. now, it's like now you're level-headed. It's not even close. Like it doesn't bother me at all. Like I, one more thing, guys. I'm sitting here looking at you guys. Who has the better hair? I can do different styles. Okay. I can go short. I can go long. Drake sort of seems to keep that length and a little bit longer. Yeah. I can I can rock a cornrows. Uh -huh. I can rock a fade. I can do a lot of different things. So what you're saying is we should go check your Instagram for all yeah, of go those check my Instagram. All those have been on there? Yeah, That's make what sure. We're gonna have to do. <laughs> there and Drake, we appreciate the yeah. time, guys. <laughs> so fun to get to hang out with those guys, and we're talking about um, Instagram models. And I didn't know we had a whole social media Instagram model on our set, Emac. Did you? I didn't know that either. We're looking oh, at you with those sunglasses, either. Coach. Come on, baby. What you got on? Hey, what you got on I right now? I got these bad boys at the pilot. <laughs> Hey, the there they gas are. Station. Come on, baby. Nineteen dollars and ninety-five cents. Come on. What are those? Those are pugs. They're called Dugs. D U G G S <laughs> Dugs. I should have put that on there too because I'd be getting a deal. That's NIL right. deal. Let's get coach shout NIL. Out, shout yeah. out to Dugs, a whole Instagram auto <laughs> coach with his nineteen ninety-nine oh, dollar glasses. Actually, I tweeted. My son puts it on Instagram for me. Oh, there, there you go. go. There now you go. We know. See? Now, now we know. know. Now you know the, the, how the magic happens behind the scenes. You can't spend good money on sunglasses because I fully believe they just get them. broken or lost. Anyways, on the other side of this, we've got one more block to talk about NC State, and we're diving into that schedule, starting on the road for the. First time since 2008 and a big game at Clemson to kick off conference mm. play. You know they want to see that game again. Road Trip is presented by Xfinity. Welcome back out to NC State. Coach Kelsey and Emac with you. We are taking a look at the Wolf Pack schedule. It all starts September 3rd on the road for the first time since 2008. Come on. And some really big home games for this team as well. Undefeated here at Carter Finley Stadium last year. We'll see what they're able to do this year. Emac, that's a big one to start with at East Carolina. That is going to be quite the atmosphere. <laughs> and and it, you know what's crazy is, is people who don't know and they hear you say that, they're like, what are you talking about? No, it's a no. G5 yeah. School? Absolutely well, I, I not. Coach, I Absolutely. coached there once. You know season. a little yeah, bit about yeah. that. Well, I know how big that game it, it's really is. I think there's legislation that you have to play that game, and that's a that's a tough, tough environment for NC State. I believe the last no two times they went there, 0-2. So those guys are going to be ready. That's going to be the Super Bowl for ECU. But, Coach, yep. this team, they're a little different. I, I think yeah, they're right. going to be more than mm -hmm. ready for that challenge. No doubt. And then when you look at their first conference game at away at Clemson, you're thinking, oh my gosh, that's a bad way to start the season. But if you're going to start the season with Clemson, you want to have a mature team. They have a mature team. You want Clemson to be going through some change, which Clemson's going through change. So I think it's going to be helpful for, you know, NC State to play them early. Right. Now, if you get your butt beat, that Clemson's got to lose twice, which makes it tough, puts you behind the eight ball. But if you're going to play them with the mature team, if you have a mature team, Game one is not a bad time to catch him. And when you look at that game and, and the implications that it sure. has, I mean, that, that to me, circle that game, that the winner of that is going to the ACC championship and maybe win it. I mean, we look at what the Atlantic has done outside of last year when Pitt, what about you know, kind of rain. You heard what I said. <laughs> you heard what I said. But that game, October 1st, I think it's just that big of a deal. And Clemson has longest home winning streak in the country. Yeah. They're different at home. But that game is going to be important for both of these programs. What is the ceiling for this NC State team? Are we? You just mentioned that that's a big game. And talking about ACC championships, is this a playoff team? Is this yeah. What is this team? Listen, to me, there's only 15 teams that start the year off with a chance to win the playoff. I think yeah. they're one of them. I think they have everything that they need. The the schedule sets up. It's not a Correct. daunting schedule. And in this conference, if, if you have one loss, you win the ACC, you're undefeated, you're going to the playoff. If you beat Clemson and then finish with a big win against Wake and your home opponent uh, rival in North Carolina, mm -hmm. you got a shot to be in the big yeah. one. 
You heard our guys right here preseason talking fall camp and we are talking about the college football playoff with this NC State Wolfpack team. Looking forward to seeing all that lies ahead for them and looking forward to taking this ACC football road trip on the road to Syracuse, North Carolina. So Syracuse, New York. We are in North Carolina now. Syracuse, New York is where we are headed. Things maybe a little cooler there in Syracuse than they were here at NC State, but such a great time here today with the Wolfpack. Um, I learned one thing. Hardest Hands part up. of a quarterback's job, catch the snap. <laughs>